favorite meetings of the month, our student citizen of the month. And is it true that there's some in the room that are a little bit excited because tomorrow's the last day of school for the year? Okay, I feel the excitement. <laughs> and maybe as the council members are still coming in, a group that we greatly appreciate. They are some of the heroes of Gilbert. Any of our teachers, school administrators, principals, if you could please stand and be recognized. Thank you, and, and you can have a break too for a couple of weeks, but uh, we, we greatly appreciate you, and you are the shining stars of Gilbert. We were talking to a group uh, just a couple of weeks ago that we, and they do economic development. They bring businesses from outside of Arizona to Arizona and then show them around, and Gilbert is one of the communities they show, and we asked them the question, when you think of Gilbert, and you're talking to a business outside of Arizona, what do you think of? The first thing they said was, Education. I said the reason why we would tell a business about Gilbert is because of our education system. So again to the group that just stood, thank you. Now tonight for Student Citizen of the Month, we have three different groups. And in the three groups we bring up elementary students first. And if the elementary school that you go to starts from A to J, does that sound right, Council Member Daniels? A to J? <laughs> group A to I. A to I. And an example might be Ashland Ranch is first group, and then I would be Island. Islands Elementary, Imagine West. And so uh, when we ask for group one, you'll come up, and group two will be the rest of the elementary students, and then group three will be if you're in junior high or high school. And by way of introductions, here's the team. So Mayor John Lewis, Councilmember Daniels will be the official spokesperson, and then helpers will be Councilmember Peterson, Vice Mayor Cooper and Council Member Taylor. Let's give them a nice round of applause. <laughs> so to the council, the energy is here, the enthusiasm, I think we're ready to roll. And so the official Student Citizen of the Month program will begin with those in group one. If you are in elementary school and the first letter of your elementary school is from an A to I, please come on down and stand right in back of me right here. Councilmember Daniels will then say each name and the recipient of the Student Citizen of the Month Award will come and stand right here next to me. We'll take a picture. The pictures will be posted on our town website and Gilbert Digital Cards are in the back of the room. There are other spots where we can, you can see where these pictures are taken. If you would like to take a picture, feel free to come up in this area and join us and then we will do a group picture after everyone has come forward. So with that, Council Member Daniels, please. Thank you, Mayor. From Ashland Ranch Elementary, Cade Martinez. From Burke Elementary, Bethany Bosley. <laughs> From Carol Ray Ranch Elementary, Jessica Marie Dorf. From Centennial Elementary, Taryn Toombs. <laughs> 
from Coronado Elementary, Bryce Merrill. From Finley Farms Elementary, Cassandra Montano. From Gateway Point Elementary, Asher Markovich. From Gilbert Elementary, Kelly Quast. From Greenfield Elementary, Crew Crandall. From Highland Park Elementary, Bryce Fleming. From Higley Traditional Academy, Alexis E. Sanchez. From Houston Elementary, Jeremiah Holt. <laughs> Mayor, that concludes group one. Group one, come on up here. We're going to do a group picture together right in this area. Another big round of applause for group one. Thank you, you may be seated. <laughs> group two would be anyone else in elementary school, come on down. And as they're coming, I'll say this, it would be so nice to be able to give all the details about why our student citizens of the month were nominated. And there are various reasons, and I will just make a high level. Some of the reasons have been just extra service in the classroom, maybe something that was noticed out in the playground, maybe it was helping a, a, a teacher. There's so many reasons why they have been nominated as Student Citizens of the Month. And so these are our finest, and we encourage you, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. And if you don't know what you're doing, keep doing it anyway. But this is now group two, the rest of our those in elementary school. 
from Mesquite Elementary, Vanessa Geoffrey. From Neely Traditional Academy, Samantha Cassidy Garland. From Oak Tree Elementary, Carmen Ulate. From Patterson Elementary, Brandon Litchver. I can always tell when I say the kids' names wrong because they look at me a little bit funny. It's Brandon Lickvar. Thank you, Brandon. <laughs> From Pioneer Elementary, Reed Chewy. From Playa del Rey Elementary, Frankie Wilhite. <laughs> From Power Ranch Elementary, Danny Morcos. From Quartz Hill Elementary, Trevor Tenney. <laughs> From Riggs Elementary, Sean Simmons. From Settlers Point Elementary, Ryan Hemphill. From Sonoma Ranch Elementary, Andrew McDonald. <laughs> From
from Spectrum Elementary, Ryan Sunga. From Town Meadows Elementary, Caitlin Farrell. From Val Vista Lakes Elementary, Jacob Alexander. And last but not least, Mayor from Val Vista Academy, Sydney. Sorry. I want to make sure I get it right. Belagiron? Belarjan. Sydney Belarjan. Is that group two? <clears throat> All right, we'll gather for a picture, and then Joe Gusick, if you can come up here. After we separate, we're going to have an announcement about a proclamation that happened in November, and, and we'll have you take 30 seconds on that, and we're going to find it, so get ready. All right, here's our group two picture. I'll let, let, shift a little bit this direction. So all those with the cameras will be able to get us in a little more bright light. Is that going to work right there? Let's hear a big round of applause for group two. Thank you, you may be seated. <clears throat> group three, if you are in junior high or high school, please come forward. Joe, come on over here. This is another one of our town heroes. Joe helped put together a special proclamation that the mayor announced at the end of November and has significance to all of us in this room. What was the proclamation all about? Um, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd just like to remind everybody that proclamation was the Arizona School Tax Credit. Uh, actually, making the, the month of December till December 31st, you have the opportunity, as all of you, with the rights by from given to you from your state legislators, to actually make a donation to a district, charter, or a private school. So we would definitely appreciate, and I'm sure all of the educators in this room would definitely appreciate if you would make that donation. It is a dollar for dollar tax credit. And it's you actually uh, choosing to make education first. Thank you, Mayor. That education first right here. Thank you. And Joe, I, on our town website, and there are many places, but it's on the town website. And uh, more details of how to do it. Yep. Okay, thank you. Okay. Councilmember Daniels, this is group three. Those in junior high and high school, and they're ready, so please. From Campo Verde High School, Eric Center. From Desert Hills High, Chase Pierce.
from Gilbert Early College, Daniel McDermott. From Gilbert Classical Academy, Emily MacArthur. From Camp Averde, Jenna Woodbury. <laughs> From Gilbert High, Arana Restorza. From Gilbert Junior High, Angel Sanchez. <laughs> From Greenfield Junior High, Christian Kisteman. From Higley High, Daniel Reed. <laughs> From Highland High, Chelsea Brooks. From Mesquite High, Rachel Addington. <laughs> From Mesquite Junior High, Savannah O'Connell. From Perry High, Diana Chen. From South Valley Junior High, Natalyn Beth Larson. From Williamsfield High School, Celia Saldana.
and Mayor from Gilbert Junior High, Raymond Dibble. We'll organize for a group three pitcher. Come forward and we'll, this vicinity. And yes, this is where I'll have to get on my tiptoes. And a big round of applause for group three. Thank you. I realize, especially some who are in this group, have some finals tonight, or study for finals. But remember, your last day is tomorrow, and then the celebration really begins. But we thank you for your efforts, and as mentioned, even if we didn't get specific with some of the great things you're doing, thank you. You are the heroes of Gilbert tonight. And on your way home, if you happen to stop by and have a treat somewhere and shop Gilbert, that's okay too. Or maybe you have to wait till after the finals. But thank you for coming. That concludes tonight's Student Citizen of the Month program. And our town council meeting will begin in the next couple of minutes. Thank you.
This is our 15 second warning. Welcome to our December 19th, 2013 Gilbert Town Council meeting. I'm Mayor John Lewis. I call the meeting to order and we will begin with the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance. As the agenda says, the invocation may be offered by a person of any religion, faith, belief, or non-belief, as well as council members. A list of volunteers is maintained by the town clerk's office. Interested individuals can con contact the clerk's office. We will begin tonight with the invocation being offered by Rabbi Shimi Ash of our Jewish Center of Gilbert. After the invocation, Councilmember Ray will introduce one of our scouts to lead us in the pledge, and then the rest of the scouts after that. We invite those who are here at Council Chambers to please arise. Last time I addressed the town council, sorry, I'm a bit under the weather. Um, when I was preparing the prayer, I put, I had just moved to town, and uh, I had put the city of Gilbert. And I read it, and I sit, sat through the meeting, and as I'm sitting through the meeting, I'm realizing to myself, I can't believe it, I just stood up at the meeting and kept on calling the city, the city of Gilbert. And, but after living here for a period of time, except, well, a period of time, I've really come to say that even though Gilbert may not be technically a city, but I think uh, in the in the advant in the good way, Gilbert definitely can be considered a city. But we'll just keep the protocol for tonight. <clears throat> good evening, Honorable Mayor, Town Council, Town Officials, and good evening to all. <clears throat> As we gather here today, we would like to extend our good wishes and blessings to the Mayor and Town Council. May God Almighty bestow upon the leaders of this great town the wisdom and understanding to continue in the path of justice and goodness. Bless these individuals elected by the people in whom faith and confidence have been placed to legislate law, making decisions that will affect the lives of their citizens. Let them recognize that it is not only a great honor and a civic responsibility, but a holy endeavor as well. Almighty God, grant those that those assembled here be aware of your presence and this holy mission. And may we continue to prosper with the message of freedom and the ability to be just and kind with continued acts of goodness and kindness. May the town of Gilbert serve as a beacon of light for people of all faiths and all walks of life to achieve the goal so powerfully stated in our Pledge of Allegiance so that America is truly one nation under God with liberty and justice for all. And let us say, Amen. Matthew is going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, Mayor. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'll pass the microphone down and we'll have each one of you introduce yourself and tell us what rank you are. I'm Tristan Davis and I am a tenderfoot and I'm almost a second class. I am Dylan Vernon and I don't exactly have a clue what, what rank I am. <laughs> I am Matthew Daniels and I am a life scout. I'm Kyle Hatch and I am a first class scout. Thank you very much, Scouts, for coming down tonight. Mayor Lewis, any remarks for them? No, I, we appreciate you coming, and uh, thank you for being part of tonight's town council meeting, and thank you for all the service you provide in the community. Thanks, guys. Our town clerk, Kathy Templeton, will now conduct the roll call. Mayor Lewis? Here. Vice Mayor Cooper? Here. Council Member Cook? Here. 
Council Member Daniels? Here. Council Member Peterson? Here. Council Member Ray? Here. Council Member Taylor? Here. Quorum is present. Thank you. Council Member Peterson will conduct our first presentation proclamation, please. Sorry, I was sleeping on the job there. Uh, I would like to invite uh, Amy, Amy Rigler with the Small Business Alliance and Christine Weatherington with Chamber for Good uh, up for just a minute. Thank you. These are some two amazing uh, women in our community who work very hard to support uh, the needs of our community. And I have been so pleased to get to know them better and to watch their efforts. Um, something I'm very passionate about is encouraging an increase in private giving. Um, so we have a proclamation for that. And uh, I guess what we'll do is, if, before we do that, if you have any, you can add something or you don't have to, but I'd like to give you that opportunity. I just wanted to let everyone know that Chamber for Good is a website that gives everyone an opportunity in our community to find out more about nonprofit needs in our community and where you can give and of your time and your resources. And we send out a weekly email that updates all the current needs that have been posted on the website. We have 32 nonprofits currently enrolled. And so you can go to gilbertgives.com, scroll down just a little bit. There's a place you can put your email and then you can get those emails every Monday afternoon. We just want to express our gratitude, really. It's, uh, it's our honor uh, to be able to be involved in the community and to uh, partner with nonprofits here that are doing very important things for our residents. And it's really um, our honor. So thank you. Well, thank you. So with that, whereas private giving is correlated with health, happiness, and success, whereas private giving is a true expression of goodwill, and whereas private give increases in private giving are correlated with decreasing crime rates and whereas both givers and receivers are benefited by private giving and whereas the business community has a great influence for good through facilitating private giving and whereas for-profit and non-profit businesses benefit from collaborative relationships and whereas the citizens of Gilbert find joy and satisfaction in giving opportunities and whereas the Small Business Alliance and the, Chamber, the Gilbert Chamber of Commerce have contributed time, talent, and resources without any, any personal gain to encourage private giving. Now, therefore, John W. Lewis, mayor of the town of Gilbert, does hereby recognize the Small Business Alliance and the Ch Gilbert Chamber of Commerce. Let's give them a hand. Vice Mayor Cooper, do we have some requests on the communication from citizens? No, Mayor, not that I know of. Well, I'll just call one person up. Rod? <laughs> this repairing after dark, what is that all about? And what, why would the citizens want to know about this? Thank you, Mayor Lewis, members of the council. Rod Buchanan, your Parks and Recreation Director. I'm excited to announce this great town event. It's a brand new event. It's never happened before, and it is happening at the repairing tomorrow night from 5.30 to 8.30. And uh, one thing I wanted to mention about this, besides the live music and uh, seeing the repairing in a way that you've never seen it before, I also want to mention that it, this was actually one of our wildly important goals this last year, bringing multiple divisions, the repairing, uh, some folks from special events that are all working under in the same collaborative form to try to get something together and so they decided they would explore each other's divisions and actually come up with a special event. 
and uh, they receive sponsorships and things like that. So it's a great, it's going to be a great evening, and I encourage you all to come out. Thank you. Thank you. On the consent calendar, agenda items 3 through 10, were there any desires to speak on those items, Vice Mayor Cooper? Mayor, no. Okay, thank you. As the agenda reads, the items listed are considered consent calendar items and may be approved by a single motion unless removed at the request of council for further discussion or action. Other items on the agenda may be added to the consent calendar and approved under a single motion. Vice Mayor Cooper, based on polling the council members, I'll ask you to pr proceed in a, m with a motion. Yes, Mayor, I move that we approve uh, the consent calendar items three through 10. Bringing item uh, number 18 forward as well to approve as presented. And uh, we'll handle item 16 in, in a bit uh, that we were gonna bring forward. We'll just, uh, so it's items three through 10 in my motion as well as item 18 to approve as presented. Second. With that motion and second, please vote. Thank you, that's approved with a seven on vote. Council Member Ray, do you want to do that now? The additional agenda item? Okay. We moved too fast, didn't we tonight? This is related to agenda item 16, Council Member A. May I move to approve um, <clears throat> that we appoint Diane Fales and Lynn King Smith as regular members of the Arts, Culture, and Tourism Board with terms beginning on February 1st, 2014, ending the term on January 31st, 2017. And we <clears throat> approve Rita Sipple as an alternate term beginning February 1st, 2014, and ending January 31st, 2015. Thank you, is there a second? Second. With that motion and second, please vote. That's approved with the 7 of vote, thank you. We move to public hearing items. Vice Mayor Cooper, just to get a sense before I read what's on the agenda, 11 through 15, do we have some council members and uh, citizens that wanted to speak on certain items? Mayor, we do have citizens that would like to speak on item 13. I have not had an opportunity to speak to anyone about any other items, so I'm not aware. Okay. And as far as citizens, is, is it just 13? And to the council, 11, 12, 14, and 15, would you like some discussion on those four items? And, and which one, Council Member Cook? On number 12. Number 12. Any other requests from Council? And which one, Council Member Peterson? 15. 15, okay. Thank you, I also wanted to talk about 15, so 11, and 14, I would take that I could open and then close and we would be ready to proceed on those two. Okay, thank you. I open the public hearing and excuse me, let me for the public to know. On the agenda are items 11 through 15 and they can be heard at one public hearing at which time anyone wishing to comment on a public hearing item may do so. Comments will be heard from those in support of or in opposition opposition to an item. And in order to comment on a public hearing item, you must fill out a public comment form indicating the item number on which you wish to be heard. Once the hearing is closed, there will be no further public comment unless requested by a member of the council. After the public hearing, the council may act on all items not requiring, requiring additional staff, public, or council member comment with a single vote. And with that as the information on the agenda, I would 
open the public hearing on agenda items 11 and 14 and close the public hearing items on agenda items 11 and 14 and entertain a motion. Mayor, that I, I move that we approve items 11 and 14 as presented. Second. Thank you. With that motion, second, please vote. Those items are approved with a 7 0 vote. Thank you. I, Vice Mayor Cooper, because the citizens that wish to speak are here for number 13, uh, to Council Member Cook, let's go to 13 and then we'll come back to 12. So I now open the public hearing on agenda item 13 and we'll ask first for a staff presentation. Mayor Lewis and members of council, my name is Alan Ward. I'm a um, planner with the uh, Planning Development Services Department, Town of Gilbert. This is a major general plan request. It's known as GP 1307, known as Vestar, Greer Town Center, and it's located at the southwest corner of Higley and Riggs Road. Now let me just mention a general plan amendment is only considered one time a year. There's a, a number of criteria as established in our general plan which are um, 40 acres or more of residential going to non-residential, 160 acres or more of residential dens uh, density increase, 40 acres or more of non-residential for non-residential purposes. And what we're talking about today is 40 acres or more of residential to a non-residential. So it is a major general plan amendment considered once a year, as I mentioned, it is required to have a two-thirds majority vote of, um, of council, and that would be five out of seven. Vestar itself is uh, requesting a major general plan amendment, a uh, 54 acre site from regional commercial to residential density of two to 3.5 dwelling units an acre. So going from regional commercial to residential. This is a site, uh, Riggs Road along the north side, Higley along the east, and you can see it in blue, uh, purple I should say, overall site gross area is 54.7 acres from regional commercial to residential. Again, shown here in, uh, with the white, and uh, the existing uh, site contains a, uh, an older dairy operation which has been there for a number of years. You can see some of the surrounding sites immediately to the east across Higley Road is a 20-acre site known as Riggs Pavilion, and then there's additional five acres to the north, Seville, at the corner of um, uh, Riggs and uh, Higley. Country Shadows to the north, Acacia, one acre lots to the south, so it kind of gives you a little bit of the overall context. I wanted to show you everything in red is the is commercial. Shows the overall residential development. And this is approximately a two mile radius from the site. The site itself is centrally located with the two commercial properties to the east. And then a, a mile to the north is another commercial property containing roughly 50 acres. And then you can see a couple other ones off to the west and, and northwest. Even fading back farther, again, you can see the um, the red is commercial, anything else would be non, uh, would be residential or um, non-commercial sites. Um, one of the questions tonight is, is there sufficient commercial in this area? And that kind of gives you a picture of the overall location of commercial sites. Some of the other developing subdivisions in this area, the Dora Trails with approximately 1,800 units uh, built and underway and planned in the short next few years, the bridges, 1,400. Marbella Vineyard, 600, uh, Caliandra, Monteverdi, and then there's uh, 160 acres being um, in the process of being annexed, Val Vista and Chandler Heights, and that's to accommodate 550. So overall, just in this relatively uh, close proximity area, there's approximately 4,500 homes either recently approved or currently underway. A little bit of background to the Vestar site. It was annexed. Uh, zoned and general plan amendment in 2003 uh, on behalf of the applicant, on behalf of Vestar, and that went from a, um, um, to uh, a regional commercial site. Actually, the, the zoning, the corresponding zoning was C2 general commercial, but the, the regional commercial zoning, uh, general plan was the, was the category for the whole 54 acres gross. Then the zoning got changed under the new land development adoption in 2005 to regional commercial. 2007, Vestar entered into a development agreement with the, with the town of uh, Gilbert related to improvements of infrastructure and, uh, and utilities. 2007, there was also a pre-op that came in 
was submitted, uh, Greer Town Center, 475,000 square feet of commercial. On the 54 acres, two majors, uh, inline shops plus pad sites surrounding the app surrounding the uh, the overall site. That application never proceeded and uh, never proceeded into the Development Review Board. And then that leads us up to today, what we're looking at is a request to amend the general plan to take it back to a residential type of use from the commercial. This is the Greer Town Center that was shown in the pre-application. I mentioned 475,000 square feet, a couple of majors, inline shops, and pad sites. And this is the current application the uh, developers proposing. Uh, no longer feeling that there's a suitability for the regional commercial, and that would be approximately 110, 120 residential lots. That corresponding zoning would be probably SF7, SF8, SF10, something along um, in that kind of category. There's no uh, actual zoning application associated with this case, but the applicant is requesting the amendment to the general plan first. So from a general plan point of view, how does this stack up with the policies? The policies of the general plan provide for uh, employment, retail and service uses near residential developments, project, uh, uh, protect opportunities for employment, create jobs, use proactive strategies to develop employment and, and retail sites, try to distribute retail around a little bit so that uh, uh, travel distances are reduced from home to shopping. And then the general plan overall supports the maintenance and use and expansion of commercial sites serving the community. From the Santan character area perspective, uh, that character area does support small scale commercial and regional commercial types of development in carefully selected locations, and that's one of the key criteria. And through the original adoption of this site, uh, it was considered to be a carefully selected location for regional commercial at this intersection. All levels of commercial uses should be considered, and commercial parcels are located on arterials to provide commercial uses to satisfy the um, provide goods and services to the daily needs of the residents. As part of the 60-day review process, we're required to send this out to various government agencies, Department of Commerce, Transportation, Water Resources, etc. And that has gone through the various uh, processes. Notification was provided. There was no significant um, impact to those agencies. No objections or concerns were expressed, including the uh, Chandler Unified School District. They had no objection to the proposal. Chamber of Commerce did look at it. Uh, they didn't come up with a firm yay or nay. However, they did question whether there were alternative uses of the site and whether the site could be reduced in area to accommodate maybe a smaller commercial site. Maricopa uh, Association of Government compares Gilbert's operating uh, impacts between retail and residential uses. So they have provided us information, a MAG study, and that, we'll go over that in a second, but essentially that indicates that the overall operation, uh, operational impact would be uh, negative from a, a revenue point of view from, for the town of Gilbert to do the um, uh, general plan amendment. In other words, as you can see on the bottom, the overall uh, revenue produced compared to the expenditures uh, uh, caused to be spent by the town would be much more favorable for the development of commercial versus residential, and that was from MAG. Uh, staff wanted to present to, uh, at the meeting, some of the alternative uses. If, if the applicant's indicating regional commercial retail is not uh, advantageous at the current time, there's a variety of other uses in the regional commercial zone, which is our broadest of all um, commercial districts. We would have agritainment, banks, colleges, congregate living, um, entertainment and recreation types of uses, health care facilities, hotels, personal services. So even a straight retail is not necessarily suitable, according to the, ap the applicant's argument, then there are a variety of other uses, and staff feels some of these other uses might also be advantageous to consider versus um, a full modification to residential district. Staff has received several phone calls, uh, inquiries, uh, emails, uh, not a lot, but essentially the local um, populace indicates support for the potential commercial development of the site for um, indicating that right now there's a seven mile drive one way from this area up to another regional center. And they feel that uh, they would like to have something a little bit more significant. They say there's a lack of overall shopping, there's a um, significant discretionary income available to residents in this area, and new homes are coming in all the time. And they feel that there'd be a good opportunity for a shopping center to be developed in this area, um, and that would be economically viable. 
So a little bit of discussion on what we've presented so far. General plan supports regional commercial, the Santan character area. In addition, supports commercial uses in those carefully selected locations. And again, part of that criteria be arterial and road of regional significance, which Riggs is classified as. And obviously Higley is a, a major arterial. Economic development supports the maintenance of the current regional commercial land use classification. Uh, public comments generally prefers, it hasn't been substantial, but they generally prefer what we've received, commercial use. And we're looking at substantial population growth in the Santan character area. In fact, our calculations indicate they'll double by approximately build out 2031. And um, this area would serve not only South Gilbert, but also Queen Creek, uh, Gila Indian, uh, Gila River, excuse me, Indian community and Pinell County. So with that, uh, the application was for a full uh, modification from regional commercial on 54 acres to residential, as we mentioned. Staff is recommending denial of that request based on the goals and policies of the general plan, including there's a lost opportunity perceived for commercial employment use in this area. If the uh, amendment occurs, the Santan character area does support non-residential type of uses, including the one that we're looking at tonight. Significant growth is anticipated in this South Gilbert area prior to build out or up to build out. And the area has great accessibility on a, a arterial and road of regional significance. The Planning Commission um, also provided a recommendation that was at their December 4th meeting and they supported a, a partial modification. Instead of um, classifying, reclassifying the full 54 acres, they support a 15 acre residual property for commercial purposes. So in other words, rather than a modification of the full 54 acres, they're supporting um, 39.74 acres going to the residential two to 3.5, well, um, 15 acres would be retained. The uh, Planning Commission essentially feels that there's a, a, a viability for at least 15 acres of uh, regional commercial to remain. So with that, uh, Mayor Lewis uh, concludes my presentation. I'd be pleased to answer your questions. Thank you. Questions at this point from the council? Okay, thank you. We'll move on with our presentation from the applicant. <clears throat> thank you, Mayor and Council Members. For the record, my name is Ralph Pugh and my town of residence is the town of Gilbert. Good to be with you this evening on behalf of Toll Brothers, an absolutely fabulous and marvelous home builder in your community and anxious to bring a new project uh, to Gilbert. And also on behalf of Vestar Development and Mr. David Larcher, the Senior Vice President for Vestar is here and Mr. Oscar Dominguez from Toll Brothers is here with us. Uh, in case something really difficult comes up that I can't handle, which is very likely to happen uh, one way or the other. Mayor and Council, thank you for giving us the time to talk for just a few minutes tonight about what is to us as Vestar and to the town a very important piece of property. It is not our intent by this general plan request to drastically change the balance of land uses in this wonderful community. It is our intent to move forward on a project on this site that can happen rather than leave this piece of property vacant for the foreseeable future. You ask yourselves as you deliberate this tonight, that's the consequence of if your intention is to say no to this general plan amendment, then just be ready for it to be vacant for an exceedingly long period of time. Vestar's not here tonight because all of a sudden the residential market's hot and they want to sell this. They genuinely thought and hoped and had a vision that in 2003 when David Larcher and I started this whole thing, this could occur, a power center could occur on this site. For the reasons we'll mention in a minute, it's not happening. Not because you don't want it or the citizens don't want it or Vestar doesn't want it. It's not happening because the people who sell retail goods out of brick and mortar stores and who have fine restaurants are not coming to this site without a large shopping center and the synergy that it creates. We can all hope and want to have it happen, 
but they're the key. By the way, Mayor and Council, let me say thanks to the staff. They've put up with us for a long time. General plan amendments take months. And thanks to Al and Linda and the whole crew, Kyle, the rest of them, they've been very patient with us. We've had some very healthy and fun dialogue about this uh, over the months. And here we are tonight. Let me take just a minute and highlight for you your relationship with Vestar and what a partnership really means. Vestar has developed 19 shopping centers in the state of Arizona, maybe more when you take a few others into account. But here's the important issue. They have developed more than 13 million square feet of retail. Now, most of us in this room tonight, that, that number may not mean anything. 13 million square feet of retail is huge. And in this town, Vestar is one of your preeminent retail partners. In fact, the first. David and I were here when we did Gilbert Road and the freeway, when the freeway didn't exist. And when the town was yearning for retail sales tax and a place to shop. Who did it? It was Vestar. Who did it at Ray and Power? Vestar. They brought to fruition what we in this town enjoy today. WDP and Westcore, of course, developed them all. So together, we are your partners. I'd like to just define that very briefly. Think about this for a minute. The partnership to make retail work in any community, and in particular here, is threefold. The town is a major partner. Why? Because the town has regulatory authority over the land use. You get to decide land use. You need another partner. You need Vestar or someone like them. What do they bring to the table? They bring financing, knowledge, experience, and relationships with the tenant. The tenants drive this. The third partner are the big box users and the inline stores. If I were acting like an attorney and writing a partnership agreement among those three, you know who the managing partner would be? The tenants. Because without them, no decision can be made to build retail. You as a council can designate land as commercial all day long. You can paint it on your map. You can leave it there for years. David Larcher and Vestar can want it to happen and strive for it to happen. But until Kohl's or Home Depot or Walmart or Target or any of the other boxes like that sign on the dotted line that they sign off and are coming, none of it matters. So from our perspective, Mayor and Council Members, you have a great partnership here. The one person in the room tonight who could pick up the phone and get the attention of a senior VP at any of the big box users is David Larcher. None of the rest of us can. And they'll listen to him. And he has in, he's in touch with them. His livelihood depends upon being in touch with them and communication with them daily. He knows more than anybody about it. We're going to hear from our good friends, the neighbors tonight, who live in the Santan area. And we're going to sh explain in just a minute why we are not hurting their chances for restaurants and shops. But all the good things they're going to say to you tonight have zero impact as it relates to their ability to make anything happen. And I think they'll be fair enough to say that. What they'll say is they hope these things happen, but the one group that can do it is David and his crew. They've done it. They're experienced at it. So, Think about that as a partnership arrangement. As we consider the plan here, let me take just a minute and highlight for you exactly where we are and what happened in the Santan area plan, because that is significant. Here's the site, as Mr. Ward pointed out, 55 acres at the southwest corner of Riggs and Higley. Many of us in the room, well, Linda and I, there might be a few others, were here in 1999 when the discussion about the Santan plan started. Look at this map, if you would, please, council members. The southwest corner of Riggs and Higley, residential, intended to be residential, never ever thought of as commercial in the initial discussions of the Santan plan. Otherwise, it would have been shown at this time. What then happened? Later in 2001, the idea emerged that maybe, maybe a shopping center with a grocery anchored use could occur there. Okay, 
fair enough. Let's change the plan, designate it, and hope it happens. All right, time goes on. All the time, virtually everything else is residential, the balance of this 55 acres. Fast forward now to probably 2003-ish, 2005-ish, somewhere in there. That was at the very peak, the absolute pinnacle of the retail hysteria, I call it, or hyperextension. In those days, all it took was Home Depot or Walmart talking to Dave and saying, hey, I think that site there and that site there might work for us. And they would go do it. And generally, most of them worked. But there came a point where the structural nature of big boxes stopped. And quite frankly, my guess is, if there had not been a referendum on this case during its process, this center very likely might have been built and would have been the last one ever done at a location like this. And probably would be terribly underperforming today. But that's how close it was. And that's how serious it was. And we were engaged in those discussions. So they meant what they wanted to do. They were serious about it. And you see the plan emerged. OK, so that's your general plan. That's how it emerged. But for the benefit of the residents in the area, this was residential and only got changed to commercial because of Vestar's vision and the town's cooperation with its regulatory authority, that partnership that it takes. To our residents in the area and to you as council members, we are not intending to leave Higley and Riggs without commercial and residential serv and, and, re and restaurant services. This exhibit shows you the northeast corner is five acres. The southeast corner of this very intersection is 20 acres. Then you got R55 on the west. When I use those letters, when I use those terms in acreages, I'm afraid many people in the room may not understand the magnitude of that. Let's take just a quick minute. I don't want to bore you. And here's one more thought. For those who come to the podium tonight that are neighbors who say to us, you Vestar keep that land because we want restaurants and shopping and we need it and we're tired of driving into the mall. Please look at this map. There are 13 other parcels in the Santan plan that are commercial and totally undeveloped. So why say to Vestar tonight, ah, you got to hang on to that 55 acres. We think it's a good idea. When in reality, there's plenty. Look at this. Expand the map now. Clear up to the freeway. Now you're talking everything south of the freeway. Now we're dealing with 28 parcels and almost 500 acres. That's a section of land almost of retail. Virtually impossible to develop that much retail. We really need to give thought to what it really should be, frankly. Neighbors, please understand, we intend to leave sufficient land for commercial development. Here's the northeast corner. What could we do on that corner? We don't own it, but whoever owns it could do this. This is your typical specialty grocer. You could have Sprouts or Whole Foods on the corner, or you could have a drugstore and some inline shops. That's 45,000 square feet, OK? Probably not enough in most people's minds. Let's take another look then. What about the southeast corner? What does 20 acres mean? 20 acres means at least six pad sites on the periphery, restaurants typically, and a total of 190,000 square feet on the entire parcel. That's a lot of square footage. You could do specialty shops. You could do inline shops. You could even do a full-on grocery store there. Plenty of room. So, OK, there's 190 and 45. That's 235,000 square feet. What happens now with what we have? Here's the Vestar piece. If you are inclined tonight, council members, to say, Listen, Vestar, we don't think it should all be turned to residential. And you were to say, what would really work there? Here's our answer. 10 acres. Why? Not because we pull it out of the air and just feel good about it. It's because grocery anchored shopping centers are no longer 12 to 18 acres. In years past, they were for the very simple reason that drug stores would locate with grocery stores that had pharmacies. Now they don't do that. Now the drugstore with its pharmacy clearly and a grocery store with its pharmacy will not co-locate. Consequently, the size of land necessary for a 
shopping center that's based on a grocery anchored store is about eight to 10. So if you leave 10 on this corner and say, let's develop the other 45 as residential, Vestar, you keep 10. You know what that means to the town? It means more than 300,000 square feet of commercial uses. So I hope no one, well, people who come to the podium can say what they want to say. You can feel what you want to feel. But I hope no one honestly stands at this podium and says there's not enough commercial uses on that corner. 10 or 11 pad sites and a boatload of inline shops. Here's an interesting map. The blue stars show you where there's grocery stores out in that area. There's six of them. There used to be 12 if you kind of leak over into Chandler a little bit in some of the South Chandler area. Six of them have gone out of business. These six remain. So is there a likelihood of, of this happening here? Maybe. It could happen. Uh, and and we'll, we'll do our best to endeavor to have that occur. Okay. Here's an interesting thought. And I know we've been criticized uh, from the podium, and, and the staff has said there is growth coming to this area. Yes, there is, but not enough to make a difference. Let's assume that every statistic Mr. Ward said is true, and I believe that it is. Let's assume, based on the staff report that you see right here, we took this chart, the town is expected to grow to 320,000 people. Today, you are 70% built out. 70%. Let's keep that in mind, everybody. It's not like tens of thousands and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people are coming to the town. There's only 30% more growth. Where's it coming? The chart indicates roughly north of Germain, 51,000. South of Germain, about 41,000. Think of Mr. Ward's statistic, about 4,500 new homes in the area. Apply a three person per home, get to about 45,000. Apply five people per home, which is huge and statistically doesn't exist. That's still only 75,000. That is the drop in the proverbial bucket of what it takes to support a regional center. You can see by this chart that the Santan Village Mall and the two Vestar Power Centers today have more than 600,000 to 700,000 people within 15 minutes, which is an industry standard that the big boxes normally look for. So in fairness to the conversation, take every living human being that exists in, Hubert, in, in Gilbert today, everyone that's today, and every new one that is planned to come and put them in the Santan area, you are still completely deficient for a regional center. It does not support it. Take even the neighboring uh, uh, leakage you might get from uh, Queen Creek, we don't even get close. All right, that's it on population. E-commerce has literally destroyed the format of big boxes. Whether, whether you, we accept that idea or not, it's true. That e-commerce expects to get to 30% of all retail sales by 2025. 30% is a big number. It sends a shiver down the spine of big boxes. They're changing their formats. They're making stores smaller. They're using warehouse in parts of it so that they can deliver packages to people. They think because they want to serve the public. They look at demographics and traffic and all that, and that's what they strive for. Here's another thought for you without reading this. This is what this says. This is from the study from Elliot Pollock that we provided to the staff and to you. Simply stated is this. Generally speaking, there is a finite amount of sales tax that can be generated from a finite number of people. No matter how many retail stores you put in the finite box, the sales tax isn't going to increase simply because you have more stores. Will there be pass-through sales tax? Yes. Will there be leakage from other communities? Yes. How much is really hard to quantify? But the total amount of sales tax, when you get totally built out, which you're only 30% away from, is not going to change materially simply because you want this to stay uh, red on the general plan map. I'm not going to go through all of these with you. In 2005, we really thought this could happen or we would not have done it. It's not viable now for the reasons I've indicated. And 
and importantly, it's not viable because the big box stores not only look at regional uses and competition between, let's say, Gilbert and Peoria or Glendale and Mesa for big box locations, they're not even talking about it today. They're starting to think, hey, do we build a store in Kansas City or in Guadalajara, Mexico? Do we build one in, in Canada or do we build one in Europe? Those are the discussions. So we're in the mix with the whole world, not just our own nice little Valley of the Sun here, which we all love so much. Okay, finally, and then Mayor and Council, I'll quit wearing you out. <clears throat> I don't know how to say this. Uh, I'll do it as diplomatically as I can. And that is your updated staff report shows you the motion from the Planning and Zoning Commission, which recommended approval of 40 acres of residential and 15 of commercial. Then in the updated staff report, there's a nice paragraph that says something to this effect. We still believe that a quote lifestyle center is achievable or perhaps maybe doable on this site and that would take 25 to 35 acres. Fair enough, that's an accurate statement as to the acreage size but think about this for a minute. What is a lifestyle center? And where do you see them? You see the absolute pinnacle of lifestyle at Kierland Commons. That's, a, that's the first class, high dollar lifestyle center and it's there for all the reasons we all know. Money, people, transportation, resort hotels, tourists, golf courses, everything. There's other lifestyle centers. They're not 35 acres and they don't work very well there's one that's called Casa Paloma. It's really not a lifestyle center. It's like, a, like an upgraded shopping center with really nice shops. That's all it is. It's got inline shops and pads. It's not turned inside so you walk through this nice little district area and have interaction with open air markets and all that. Please, council members, don't say, please don't say to us that that can happen on your site, Vestar, because we know that it can't. Because if it would, and if there was something to do here, we would do it. If David knew, if David Larcher knew that in the next few years, or maybe even a few more than that, something could happen, they would do it. Mayor and Council, we respectfully appreciate your attention and listening to us. This is a serious issue for us. Here's the way we look at your choices. If you're inclined to say no to this request, I'll be a little skeptical here for a minute. One of the reasons could be, which I don't believe you believe this, one of the reasons you could believe is you don't believe our statistics and our numbers. That's possible, but I honestly don't think you feel that way. I think you know Vestar and I think you know the numbers are true and we know the retail tenants. The other possibility is you could say no because maybe we as a town might know how to make this happen. I don't honestly think you feel that way either. I think you truly understand who makes this happen and who doesn't and you're looking at one of them here in the audience. Perhaps you're thinking, let's save this site. Just leave it vacant for now. Let's see what happens over the next few years. And David Larcher, you and your company, just hang on and be patient. Something good will happen. What you're really saying there is, we don't know what it'll be. We don't know how to define the use. We don't know when it'll come, but let's hang on because something that we don't know what it is, is truly coming and let's hope for the best. Please don't do that to Vestar tonight. Please let them move forward and develop this property for at least 45 acres of residential, hang on to 10, and give to our neighbors in the Santan area a boatload of shopping with at least 11 or 12 pad sites on that corner. There's no need to save 55 acres. Mayor, council members, thank you. You've been very patient. That's our feeling about it. I know it's a hard case. I wish it were easier for you, um, but that's where we are and we urge your support of this general plan amendment and would be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Any questions from the council at this point? Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Could I have a minute to respond if there are, if there are questions from uh, neighbors here tonight as, as a moment of rebuttal? We'll, we'll turn to the council and I, I think that's uh, a fair request. And okay, we'll see how it goes. Thank, thank you. you. Vice Mayor Cooper, this was the agenda item that we had requests from citizens and how many do you have? 
Mayor, I have five citizens who do not wish to speak but have registered that they are against it. And I have five slips here of those who would like to speak. Thank you. And I understand as, as we discussed, um, one of the individuals is representing a, a handful of citizens. And so we, as the meeting was starting, uh, he would be allocated five minutes, the rest would be allocated three minutes. Is that? Okay. Okay. Thank you. So first we will call, and this will be the five minute uh, timer, Bill Brothers up after Bill, uh, Justin Michael, and TJ Tillman. That's kind of the order so far, and there are a couple others. And Bill, as you'll set the standard for the record, if you could state your name and if you're a resident of Gilbert, and then, and then you'll be given five minutes. Okay. Uh, my name is uh, Bill Brothers. I live in Gilbert uh, in the uh, Seville subdivision. Um, and I, yeah, it's Gilbert. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm here to uh, um, speak about this uh, rezoning at uh, Higley and Riggs. Um, I don't speak at these, well, I've never spoken on one of these a little bit, so please excuse, I'm a little, little rusty. Um, but um, last night I was uh, cooking dinner and it got a little out of a hand. Uh, I went through a lot of careful preparation and, and did a lot of work. I put it on the grill, I poured just one glass of wine and I came back out. And as you can see, dinner was a little overdone. Um, and, and my comment here is, is this is a little bit like zoning. You do a lot of careful planning, but it's very easy to do something that just can't be undone. And so anything you do with the, the zoning, you know, be, be careful and don't do what I did. Of course, you know, my daughter did not appreciate this. <laughs> okay, you heard a lot of information. You're gonna hear a lot more, but there's a few bullets I'd, I'd really like to, to present, some, some facts that, you know, first of all, and I've got more data to support this, but first of all, South Gilbert is underserved commercially. You know, uh, by some estimates, a factor of 10 to 1 in comparison to Maricopa County and the rest of Gilbert. The property is the only regional commercial land south of Germain. We're not out of residentially zoned land. And the south se section of Gilbert, we are only at 50% build out. There's no emergency that requires you to rezone this land for more houses right away. There's, there's, no, there's no emergency to do this right now. The demographics of the area resident are some of the best in the area. And, and on that note, I would like to uh, thank the staff for my uh, putting up with my incessant, incessant questioning and their patience. Um, Vestar, I think Vestar has to prove that every potential use of regional commercial land is out of question now and forever because you can't undo it. You know, Vestar is not being held hostage by the town. They bought it presuming it would be regional commercial. They wouldn't have touched it if they knew they couldn't get it regional commercial. They agreed that it may even decrease in value. And at the time, and, and, and you know what, they own the land. If they don't believe in it, I hope they do sell it. I don't want them to hold it if they don't believe in that area. They can sell it any time they want as regional commercial. Or nobody's holding them back from that. And finally, Gilbert, what a great town to live in. You know, just driving here, just thinking, wow, this, I'm really lucky to be here. And there are so many people that want to come here. And then you see in the news all these great headlines. You know, what a tremendous demand for people to come to the area. It's, 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 it's no wonder they want to make this a, a residential. They can certainly turn a, a bit of a profit on this. All right, um, you saw in the uh, figures, and actually we saw this at the, the zoning board, this, this magic figure 700,000 came up quite a bit. You need 700,000 residents within a five mile radius to make a power center work. Um, I did some research. My background is structural mechanics, engineering, so you know I love numbers. So I did, did some of my own research. And what I found is of this number, maybe the only thing that I agree with it is maybe this part of it. Um, and in fact, if that doesn't ring any bells, I'll give you a hint. You've got, um, uh, I'll, I'll illustrate here. Here's the north side of uh, Gilbert. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna circle all the regional commercial land. And there's seven of them. Okay. Let's look at the south side of Gilbert. And if you look at the regional commercial land, that's it, there's just, just that one. And what Vestar is asking you to do is zone it out of the picture. So there will be zero regional commercial land left. Yes, there's other commercial land. It's kind of scattered, but boy, when you look at that map, does that really look balanced? 
And so that's what you're leaving the south side of Gilbert with. It's the side of town that's only at 50% build out right now. I think staff has it right. Uh, I mentioned South Gilbert as a, a retail desert. Um, according to the census, you know, we have one tenth of the, bus the business establishments that we have elsewhere um, in the Maricopa County in Gilbert. Um, our retail square footage per capita compared to the rest of the company or country is, you know, uh, 15 square feet instead of 46 square feet per resident. Um, one example, um, I, I looked up uh, Target, how frequently, what is the spacing of Target stores for various population densities. One thing I'd like to point out here, 700,000 is so astronomically large it doesn't even make the chart. You know, what's the build out? 219,000, right? Boy, that is really a sweet spot. You know what a store you won't find in 700,000 and on up is Walmart. That's the one region they cannot penetrate is high density urban environments. Right? Walmart thrives, it's 70,000. I, I came from a small town with uh, 176,000 residents, three Walmarts, very profitable. That is certainly not 700,000 residents per Walmart. Um, I, I, Walmart's a, a great kind of company to study because it's so many people hate it, but in any case, this is not data I made up. This is, this is I have sources for all my data here. So the sweet spot you know, is uh, well for for Target, it's, it's probably around 250,000. But you can see very clearly here for all cities, the average three and a half mile radius between targets, right? So look at Gilbert. They're just off the Target website, and I've located them all. And then what I've done is I've drawn a three and a half mile radius around it. And Bill, excuse the interruption. The five minute buzzer just came up. So if you could give your summary, please. Okay. All right. Fortunately, I gave it to start with. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see. Oh, one of the big things is it is, uh, I'll go right to the end. <laughs> Actually, we want to see this. No, I, uh, well, a nice prepared presentation, thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay, so one, one of the key points is this land is not zoned Walmart, it's not zoned power center, it's not zoned big box, it's zoned regional commercial, and that means hundreds, I don't know, hundreds, dozens of options at least. Um, you know, Vestar is going to benefit greatly if this land is rezoned to the detriment of the future residents. Um, we're not holding Vestar hostage. I hope they do sell it, but they should sell it as regional commercial. They, I don't think they've proven that every potential use of regional commercial land is out of the question now and forever. The time span they showed, 15 years, right? But you're zoning for 50 or 100 years. The demographics are some of the best in the area. I had to skip that. Um, we're not out of residentially zoned land. We're 50% build out in South Gilbert, and this property is the only RC land south of Germain, and we're very underserved commercially. And this is the overall map, and, and really this map just kind of serves as my, my summary. Thank you. And if anyone likes their meat, well done. Talk to Bill. Thank you. Vice Mayor Cooper. Mayor, next up will be uh, Justin Michael, and then TJ. Tillman. Hello, my name is Justin Michael. I also have a presentation. Um, oh, and I live in the town of Gilbert. And uh, I also represent a number of residents, so I'd like to respectfully request five minutes as well. We. Um Linda, with Bill, we were able to see the residents, and for, for Michael, I haven't seen, I mean, we would need some cards, so maybe, uh, Mike, why don't you sit down, talk to Linda real fast, and see if we have some other residents we could get the cards for, and let's move on to the next one and come back. Back to me. Okay. So, Linda, this would just be, if, if we have some other residents who are here that could fill out comment cards that would help the process, then we can proceed. So, TJ? Thank you, Mayor and Council. It's good to be here with you tonight. Um, and also, I wanted to thank staff for doing their due diligence in preparing that presentation. Um, I don't have a presentation. I'm not very good with computers, so I apologize for that. You'll just have to listen to what I'm saying here. But um, I am a resident of Gilbert. I've lived in the southeastern part of Gilbert for the better part of the last decade. And uh, I feel like I have my finger fairly well on the pulse of what the residents down there would like and, and feel that they need. Um, 
being in Power Ranch right now, I know that there are several developments, and I know there's a very compelling argument um, from Council for Vestar um, about those neighborhoods, uh, primarily being Marbella Vineyards that's still um, building out, um, Adora Trails, Seville, uh, Freeman Farms, Shamrock Estates, uh, the entire community of the Bridges, and uh, there are constantly new people that uh, are creating an influx of residents into that area that uh, I would echo the sentiments of the previous resident that said that we feel a little bit underserved out there. Um, I think at this point it's premature to determine the viability of the commercially zoned area there, um, especially with our projections of the town and where the residents are going to be. We're projecting almost a 50% increase in the residents in the town. and. What Mr. Pugh said may very well be the case, that this may not be a viable option in the future, but I think it's premature to make that determination right now, um, especially with the influx of people that we have coming in here. Um, I, I know I heard the argument that there are major retailers that aren't looking to place those same types of stores anymore, but I would argue that there may be. I, I know personally I've had conversations with two of the presidents of uh, two of the most successful real estate investment trusts, commercial real estate investment trusts in the nation over the last six months, and they're not slowing down. They're still purchasing more properties. Um, and I don't think that they'd be doing that if they had the same sentiments. So uh, I know in the general plan it's the idea of Gilbert to attract high wage earners and high quality businesses and I think we're going to be hard pressed to do that if we have um, areas of the town that are going to be underserved and I think we've done a good job in attracting them there but I think there's the potential that we're not going to be able to tr retain those people as well. I, I think at the very least I would respectfully request that we at least postpone a vote on it and consider the possibility of creating a stakeholders group to uh, more fully explore the idea and the the potential negative and perpetual ramifications of this decision because, uh, again, it's not something that we can go back on. Um, that's all I have. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Justin, I see that we've got other that have given some time to you. So we, Mark, if uh, when you start with Justin, you can go for five minutes. Thank you. Thank you. I apologize for the confusion. This is my first town council meeting. <laughs> it's, it's great to have you here. Thanks, Justin. Um, so again, my name is Justin, and I live in the town of Gilbert. And uh, this is why all of us are here tonight, to enhance the quality of life for our community by guiding development with proficiency and commitment. Everyone wants a great town to live in, but I don't believe this amendment will help us accomplish that goal. This is South Gilbert. This is the piece of land we're talking about tonight, the last large piece of commercially zoned property in the area. This is where I live and where I plan to continue living for years to come. This is my home, which is why this issue is so important to me. This is the zoning map for South Gilbert, which you've seen a number of times tonight. Uh, there's the 202 and there's Germain. Here's what's zoned regional commercial in the area right now. The land we're discussing tonight is at the bottom. Now let's add all of the other commercially zoned land to the map. As you can see, the property we're talking about tonight is the only significantly sized commercial property in all of South Gilbert. The vast majority of the remaining land in the 20 square miles that make up South Gilbert is zoned for residential use, and the other commercial land isn't big enough to support much more than a grocery store or small shops. Indeed, Vestar's own market analysis claims that South Gilbert is over-retailed with, with regard to grocery stores. So how does reducing the property we're talking about to 15 acres or even 10 acres make sense when doing so would resign it to the fate of what we already have too much of? Quite simply, we need a commercial space of significant size in the area to maintain balance once all of that residential land is populated in the years to come. Vestar is a business, and they're doing what businesses do. They're trying to make money. For them, that means getting this land to rezone and selling it to home builders. Because they claim something like what you see here will never work on the property in question. But how can they be so sure? Vestar does not have a time machine. If they did, they wouldn't have purchased this land in the first place when nearly 70% of voters backed the Greer Town Center that was planned at the time nor would they have said they were very anxious to resume the process of development on the eve of 2008. The fact is, 
no one can predict the future of this land. And Vestar's claims that they can are ultimately self-serving. Vestar wants the land to be zoned for residential use, not because it's the best thing for the town, but because it's the best thing for their bottom line right now. I don't fault them for that. Vestar is a business, and they're trying to take advantage of an opportunity. As you can see, new home growth is once again on the rise in Gilbert after a dip that started in 2008. Gilbert is growing. Home builders want to build homes, like the builders that are willing to buy the land from Vestar if it's rezoned. However, if these homes are built, the people who will eventually live in them will find themselves commercially underserved, just as the other residents in the area do today. Vestor has said that regional commercial development of this land is not viable. In reality, it's not viable for Vestar. They have limited relationships with specific companies, and they're focused on big box retailers serving as anchors to their properties, which limits what they're willing or able to do with the land. This property has the potential to be used in many other ways that are desirable to both the town and its residents, despite what Vestar claims. This issue isn't about what Vestar can or can't do with the land, it's about what the best use of the land is with regard to Gilbert's future. <clears throat> for all practical purposes, this decision is final and will affect the town for decades to come. If all or part of this property is rezoned residential, we're trading tomorrow for today. We're throwing away potential tax revenue, we're throwing away potential jobs, and we're throwing away something that nearly 70% of voters wanted just a handful of years ago. I'd wager even more want it today, and still more will need it as South Gilbert continues to grow. One of the goals stated in the Gilbert General Plan is to maintain a balance of housing types and provide a variety of employment opportunities with easily accessible retail and service uses. It's not that we don't want more houses or more people, we just want the town we live in to be balanced. Another goal from the plan is to encourage master plan communities that reduce automobile trips by encouraging walking, biking, and other alternative means of transportation. We would love to be able to walk or bike to take care of our shopping and get a bite to eat, but right now the people who live in South Gilbert are presented with a single option, a 15 minute drive to get to significant retail and dining. Yet another goal is to locate commercial and retail uses adjacent to residential uses in appropriate intensities to serve local, community, and regional markets. As you saw on the map, I'm almost done. As you saw on the map, the appropriate intensity of commercial space in this area would be further diminished by approval of this amendment. The planning staff recommended that this amendment be denied. The Office of Economic Development is not in support of this amendment to the general plan. Two members of the Planning Commission voted against the measure, and the remainder voted for it only with modifications that would do little to improve the matter. I and many other residents ask that you give serious consideration to denying this amendment based on the facts on hand, as well as all of the possible ramifications this change would have on the future of the town. Thank you for your time. I'd love to answer any questions. Thank you, Justin. Thank you. Next up will be uh, Paul Maybe and then Gina Maybe. Hello, my name is Paul Maybe. I'm a resident of uh, Gilbert, and um, I work in Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, I'm a, I have a concern about the uh, traffic ramifications with increased residential, especially with um, the Germain Road, which is a single lane, getting to very limited number of freeway uh, on ramps to get onto the 202 heading uh, westbound. I don't think that adding additional residents um, that would most likely be traveling to Phoenix or away from Gilbert, because there's a lack of uh, jobs in South Gilbert, so they would be traveling. I think that the uh, Val Vista stretch coming from Chandler Heights north is wholly inadequate for additional traffic. I think that the plan that was put before the voters and the voters voted, you know, took into consideration the volume of traffic that will be heading northbound and southbound uh, coming home from um, coming home from work. 
I think that um, a lot of work needs to be, and analysis needs to be done in order to uh, consider traffic volumes. Um, I think that uh, additional residents that weren't planned for will affect where schools and where school zoning will be. I think the increase in population needs to be analyzed far greater than it has been uh, to consider this amendment as it stands. Thank you. Thank you. Gina, maybe? Good evening. Thank you for your time and for hearing me. My name is Gina Maybe. I'm a resident. I live just a mile away from the, the land in question, or less than actually. Essentially, uh, council members, Vestar is asking for what I would call a zoning bailout. They are in the business of prospecting. They see a good plot of land, they buy it, they develop it, they make a profit, and they move on to the next project. And this is an honorable living. There's nothing wrong with that. But my question is, why should we, the residents of the town of Gilbert, change the zoning laws because they made a poor judgment in timing when they purchased the land? They want to be freed up from it. I'm sure it's tying up their funds and they're paying taxes and all these other things that Mr. Pugh um, feels that we, the residents, are asking them to do on our behalf by letting things remain as they will. Um, and I don't blame them for wanting to be freed up from a bad investment. We have experienced that in the Valley uh, back in 2008. Um, Eventually, Vestar will be freed up from it. They'll probably turn a profit, maybe not the, the amount that they'd hoped, but we residents will be here, people like me who live across the street from this long after Vestar moves on, and what will we be left with? Congestion because of the imbalance. Large stores and family restaurants, entertainment facilities, gyms, et cetera, need patrons, and they want to be where people have a need. That's their business. It's good business. And as 2008 drained the life out of the housing market, people bailed out of the East Valley. But five years later, people are coming back, and the homes are being sold again, not just built, not just rented, but within three square miles of where this area is, homes are going up, and people are moving in. Four subdivisions are going up um, just in that area, and our, and our area is resurrecting itself. As it builds over the next few years, the demand will rise. And this is where the words of one of the councilmen from the last zoning meeting, his words haunted me. He said, once this building is done, it's done. There's no, plan, there's no plowing down the houses to build uh, facilities for other things. And this has haunted me since that meeting. So in closing, I'd like to ask if all this that Mr. Pugh says is true about what can be done with only 10 acres of commercial land, wouldn't they have done it? I don't think they're the right people for the job. They couldn't do it, and so the city needs to rezone it? I don't think so. This, he mentioned grocery stores that went out of business. My question would be when? I doubt it was 2013. My guess is a result from 2008. If all of the numbers were true that Mr. Pugh says about what our numbers are in Gilbert um, and needing to support those stores, uh, then they would have never asked the, for this land to be converted uh, back in, in uh, was it 2007, I believe, or 2003 when they got it. I know that they didn't go into this prospecting blindly, so there was a vision at one time. I believe that they know that it's possible. They did their research uh, before, and, and they invested, I'm sure, a nice chunk of money on that land. Um, just real quick, I want to say this. You know, we don't know when the improvements are coming that, that Vestar says that we're holding as a dream, but I present to the council that it's not our responsibility to know when that is. I say stop putting your responsibilities on the town of Gilbert and the citizens and the board. If they don't want their property anymore, they need to take responsibility to do what all other property holders do, whether it's residential or commercial. They sell that property. So please don't let them put their financial needs as a landowner on top of our needs and zoning rights as the, as the town of Gilbert. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Mayor Cooper, do we have other requests? Mayor, I don't have any. Okay, thank you. I. I know there was a request to be able to come up and speak. It may be time for that, or we could have some discussion, and that could create the questions that would be best use of time. Do we have questions or comments from the council? Okay. Councilmember Peterson. 
Mayor, I uh, was I had a question about the study, the independent market analysis that was done uh, from staff. If they had any comment on that, we have a we have an analysis that says it's over retailed. And do we have a, a countering analysis, uh, a third party analysis to to offer? Um, is there some specific criticisms of it? Uh, tell me what you can about that. Mayor Lewis and uh, Councilman Peterson, uh, we did have the, uh, the study by MAG, and I did mention that in my presentation that indicated that there would be substantially more revenue from a regional commercial use of the site than there would be for residential. And I think that's, um, that goes without saying here, I think, to some extent. Obviously, there is significant revenue produced by regional commercial. Of course, the applicant has responded by saying, Again, you could put that uh, numbers on a, on, a, on a slip, but that doesn't mean that they're going to happen and, and come to fruition in actuality. But I think what staff wanted to do was talk about the over-retailed versus under-retailed um, discussion we've had tonight. And one of the things uh, that we discussed was the population. Obviously, we've um, st uh, already stated that the population of the South Gilbert area will approximately double. Now, Mr. Pugh has indicated that there's almost 500 acres of um, existing commercial south of, uh, in the southern portion of, of Gilbert, including south of Germain Road. Now, he's quite correct on that. Our actual numbers here are indicated at 530 acres. However, that compares with the overall town, and we're talking about just one th about one third of the town located in this area. The overall amount of commercial in town, and this is that build out as forecast by the general plan, is 4,600 acres. So yes, there's 500 acres located in South Gilbert, but there's over 4,600 acres in, in overall Gilbert. Now, in order to try to break that down further, well, what does that mean? We compare that with build out population, and uh, it's indicated here that per thousand people, let's compare that per thousand people, that there is approximately at build out um, 6.57 acres of um, uh, commercial land per thousand people in South Gilbert. Now, overall, Gilbert would have uh, closer to 14 acres, and North Gilbert would have closer to 17 acres. So we're at least approximately one half of the amount of commercial land per um, 1,000 people in South Gilbert at build out than we are uh, with the rest of the town. So that's my best comparison, and I'd be pleased to try to clarify that further if I could. Thank you. Councilmember Member Peterson, did that answer your question? Uh, that's helpful, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Council Member Cook. I have a question to staff, and maybe you can help with um, our memories here. About two years ago, um, I know that we had a discussion about a incentive for for this particular property around about nine point seven million dollars that we wanted you know obviously Vestar to be proactive on that. but is there someone on staff that could enlighten us about that that agreement that we did about two years ago and and explain to us what was discussed? Mayor Lewis, Council Member Cook, I might be able to take a stab at that. Uh, I think you're referring to the development agreement that was uh, entered into between the town and, and Vestar. Um, a lot of that was based upon um, public infrastructure improvements, uh, improvements to Riggs Road or improvements to Higley Road, uh, and the, the timing of that and the payback of those infrastructure costs um, with some sales tax proceeds. Um, that agreement was found at one point in time to um, uh, not be valid any longer, and so that had stopped. Um, I think it's important to note that, that early on, there, and Mr. Pugh had um, alluded to this, that there was a referendum um, against that, uh, that um, development agreement at one point in time, and the community actually came out and voted in support of that, um, showing the, the desire to have regional commercial in that area and, and to go forward with that development agreement. Uh, and then again in 2011 when the general plan was readopted, there was that, that same vote to to keep that regional commercial in that area. So um, I kind of danced around the development agreement a little bit. I hope I was able to answer some of the question. But again, the town was committed to obviously supporting a build out of a something commercial at that particular property. Is that correct? Mayor Lewis, Council Member Cook, absolutely. Yes. Okay, thank you. Council Member Peterson. I have a follow up to that, uh, that development agreement. 
can you tell us uh, what was the consideration on the part of uh, the town in that agreement? Mayor Lewis, Councilmember Peterson, I don't know the specific numbers. I wasn't part of that development agreement, but what I can tell you is there was a, a repayment of some of the infrastructure costs through the, um, the obligation of sales tax, but the actual numbers I can't answer. And when did you say that, that the terms of that had expired? I believe um, the last discussions were in 2007, and, and by that time, the, the obligations that were in the development agreement had not been met, so the development agreement was deemed to be void at that time, was no longer in effect. Okay, thank you. Okay. To the council, I think um, this is such an important decision that I would recommend that the applicant, as requested, be given a couple of minutes to come and make some comments. Would you be all okay with that? Mr. Pierre, please. <clears throat> Mayor, council members, thank you very much. The last thing we want to do tonight is be adversarial with our neighbors in the Santan area. So I'm not going to respond question for question, issue for issue. Simply want to lay a broad answer to the overarching question of demand for retail services at this intersection. If the demographics were so good at this location, if there was so much money, so many people, such great transportation, the users would be knocking on the door of David Larcher and ringing his phone until he couldn't stand it anymore. That is not happening. We want it to happen. Vestar wants it to happen. The neighbors want it to happen. It won't happen until those folks want it. And they, as retailers and restaurateurs, you know what their favorite thing is? Success. You know what brings success? Demographics, people, transportation, amenities, good employees. That's what those people think about. And if this corner were a great site for it, they'd be here or they would be planning on it and we'd be having a site plan working through the system eventually. That's, that's the overall answer to that broad issue of we in South Gilbert want more services. Well, so do we. Nobody wants to do that more than David. In answer to your question, Councilmember Peterson, I thought you were referring to the study in your packet by Elliot Pollack. Elliot Pollack is indeed the third party consultant that reviewed this whole situation and provided a very detailed analysis that reached the conclusion that this area cannot support the retail power center, regional center uses. To this day, we have not had any detailed, specific response to that study. I thought that was the question you were asking. And honestly, what that means is, we're going back to my third point of choices. And that is, to say no to this case is to say, we believe we live and die by sales tax. We need it here. Our citizens need it here. So hang on for the ride and let it happen. Mayor, that's all I have. I'd, I'd get into more issues, but I'll avoid the temptation. Thank you. Councilmember Taylor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Ralph, thanks for coming and sharing some thoughts. W would you mind addressing the point that was made a couple of times about alternate uses? Oh. Uh, Mayor and Council Member Taylor, that's a very interesting, frankly to us, fascinating question. Let's think about what's allowed in Regional Center. The only one that we can really hope that might magically appear is an entertainment or recreation use that we don't know what it is today. Could someone come in here and want to do some facility there on, on 55 acres? Sure. It would be very unique, very different. That's possible. Every other use isn't happening. Healthcare and hospital, they're already stationed, they're already situated. That's not happening. Hotels, look, we've had a hard enough time getting hotels in Gilbert. Uh, as it is, much less at Riggs and Higley. The hotels that come here are focused on the freeway where they ought to be. We don't see it happening here. Public facilities, you want to build a town facility there? Great. That's another use. 
Recreational vehicle park, I don't think any of us want to do that. That's not a good use there. And storage facilities. Honestly, there's not much that can be done there that's practical other than a power center. If you think there are uses in regional commercial, I, I, we don't know what it is. That's our best answer to you, Council Member Taylor. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Council Member Ray. This is probably best addressed by one of the town staff, um, although I know Mr. Pugh helped write this, but the, the Santan character area um, has been, was, was created some time ago, um, and, and there, I, I believe, was direction by council in the last year to, to revisit that, and there were talks of a stakeholder group, and I believe that Nathan from the town is uh, helping to spearhead some sort of a stakeholder group to revisit that plan. Where does that stand from a town perspective? Good evening, Mayor and Council Member Ray, Linda Edwards, Planning Manager. Like Ralph mentioned, we were both very involved in the creation of the Santan character area back in 1998. It took two years to develop the Santan character area. And over the last couple of years, there's been several general plan amendments with recommendation from the Planning Commission and the Town Council to update the Santan character area. We did kick that off. We've had a couple of focus groups or stakeholder groups, but we need to do a better job. So we're going to kick it off again in January with a bigger group. We're also going to be updating the other three character areas in Chapter 10. Linda, thank you. Ha any expectations to the duration of the stakeholder group when you would come back with some sort of recommendation or ideas? Mayor and council members, the format of the general plan of Chapter 10 is a little discombobulated, so we will create also a new format that works well and that's clear. So we will reformat it and we want to be sure that we do a great job, I would say a minimum of six months. Other questions or comments? Before I close the public hearing on agenda item 13, it might help to get some feedback from council just in case that triggers questions. So anyone that would like to jump in and give some thoughts? Council Member Taylor. Mayor, um, question for staff, whoever might want to take this one. The, the, the idea of something will you know, drop in in the future, What? What do we? What, what kind of evidence are we seeing, or can we? Can can you talk about of an alternate use in in the future? I know that's a crystal ball question, but you know evidence matters in in some of these cases. Um, so, what what are you seeing or hearing, Mayor Lewis, Council Members? The, the <laughs> The best way I can answer this is to say that the trend is true. Um, everybody says that, that um, commercial, retail, offices um, follow rooftops. What we've seen over the past few years, and you've seen the charts tonight, we've seen a steady increase in the number of residential building permits over the past few years. So as those residential permits have been going up, we didn't have a whole lot of commercial or office or employment type of, of projects coming in. Now we're starting to see more and more of that. We've seen, you know, the, the Winco is in, we, Banner, uh, MD Anderson has gone to their second phase. We've seen Ironwood Cancer Center come in. So we've seen a lot more different uses kind of following those, um, those rooftops. Um, I would say as more and more of those 4,500 homes develop in the south part of Gilbert that you will continue to see additional um, employment needs and em employment uses and retail uses. Um, th th that demand will be there because of those additional homes. What those uses are, I can't tell you. Um, because we don't zone to the exact use, we zone to larger districts. Um, but I can tell you that the vacant stores and storefronts and shops that are at the corner of Chandler Heights and um, Higley, if you go look at those now, there's a Dunkin' Donuts being constructed. There was an inline pad site that uh, was constructed in full before it was even completed. Uh, there's a new restaurant going in there. All of those sites that were once vacant are now starting to fill up and fill up quite rapidly because of the demand in all of those houses that are, that are being constructed. I, I hope I'm getting to the question somewhat. Yeah, is any, okay, so rooftops, anything in addition to rooftops that you're seeing? I mean, are we talking with 
have you seen any transportation um, plans that are down there that would you know increase traffic or you know in addition to rooftops what what are what else would potentially bring people to something here. Mayor Lewis, Councilmember Taylor, on tonight's council agenda, there was an IGA between the town of Gilbert and uh, Maricopa County um, for um, improvements to Riggs Road. Um, Riggs Road is a road of regional significance. It's a very uh, important road that, that links east to west through Chandler, through Gilbert, into Queen Creek. Um, that road is being improved. Um, both east and west. So um, we just finished, the town of Gilbert itself just finished the, the portion between um, Val Vista and Wrecker, and now the Wrecker piece east is going to be continued by the county. It's already improved in the Chandler area. So that road now is not one or two lanes. Now we're talking three lanes in each direction with the, with the center median. Um, Higley Road, as you know, we've been working on for, for quite a while. So that connection is, is now complete almost from um, this area clear to the, to the freeway past MD Anderson. So the, the connections are there. Um, Hunt Highway is to the south. The right-of-way is in place. Funding for that would be uh, is several several years away. I don't even think there's design plans for that yet, but there is um, at least thoughts, and, and you've seen it on some plans, the continuation of Hunt Highway. As we move forward, Ocotillo Road will, will connect um, over the, the flood floodway there and go from Higley Road over to Val Vista, or to Greenfield, I'm sorry. That'll connect that. Uh, you'll have more of an east-west connection there. So there are a lot of CIP projects and a lot of even regional projects as we look at that Riggs Road that that'll, it, it will help drive some of that, that demand and, and some of that. Um, another thing, when you, you start talking about a lot of the development that happens to the southeast of us, um, folks that are coming from that southeast area will come up Hunt Highway and come up Riggs Road. Um, that's, a, that's a great connection, or I'm sorry, will come up Higley Road. That's a good connection and a good way to get to um, the 202. Um, Ellsworth to the east in Queen Creek was recently um, redone within the last year, so that, that um, took some of that traffic, but you still have a large demand of folks that, that will drive um, Hunt Highway, turn north on Higley Road, and then into the community. So this is a great area, has a lot of good access, and there's a lot of, a lot of roadway improvements that are occurring. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Very helpful. Council Member Daniels. Thank you, Mayor. Al, can you put back up the slide um, that you had of potential land uses under regional commercial? It does differ a little bit from the one that Ralph put up, and I just think it might be a, a good comparison. And take your time, Al, because that actually leads into my comments that I'd, I'd like to make about this. And someday, Ralph, I'm going to go to law school so that I can argue on par with you. I, you are a, a skilled, skilled lawyer, and I appreciate your efforts. You know, I respect you very much. And um, my husband might call me a too frequent shop, too frequent of a shopper at some of the Vestar properties that are close by our house at, at Ray and Power. And so. Um, of course, great respect for, for what Vestar has brought to the community, and in no way are my comments reflective of a negative attitude towards either Ralph or, or Vestar. Um, but I, I am not in favor of this, this uh, general plan amendment um, for multiple reasons. And, and Mayor, I'll, I'll just touch on a few of them. I know that probably all of us will have a chance to speak to this. Um, but in 2003, Vestar did sell a vision to the community, and uh, it sounds like it was both at great expense and great time with a referendum and, and such. Um, our general plan was adopted. Um, the community really has gotten behind something of this significance. Now, let's just say for argument's sake that, that regional commercial is not viable in this, although, Ralph, I do have to argue with your point that, you know, we're moving away from this type of regional. That very well may be the case, but Bestar on their own website does say that they've spent $700 million in the last three years um, in acquisition. And so that's a substantial amount of money and must have some in indication about um, the viability of at least some regional commercial, not specifically pointing to this site. But let's just say for argument's sake that regional commercial is, is not viable in this particular spot. There are lots of other uses and other zoning categories that potentially could be viable. Um, I have no crystal ball. <laughs> Wish I did. Um, but I'd hate to see us be short-sighted as a council. Once there are rooftops there, there is no going back. We've shut the door on every other commercial, business, industrial, retail, whatever other opportunities there may be. Um, and so I, I've asked the question before, um, 
are there really no other viable uses at this site other than residential? And I, I think we could look at most of our commercial, commercially zoned property in Gilbert and say that uh, we could probably, it could all, probably all be sold and made into residential and those homes would sell. Gilbert's a desirable place for people to live. But what we also need Gilbert to be, and we use this term in the town, with aggressive patience, Gilbert will also be a viable place for people to go to work, a viable place for people to uh, accomplish their business needs. And, and I don't want to close the door on that, Mayor. I'm not ready to close the door on that. Um, I recognize that, that Bestar uh, owns a piece of property that under their portfolio is not viable for them. And for that, I, I can only say, you know, that it's unfortunate, but for the community as a whole, we need to make sure that we aren't just residential, we aren't just rooftops in order to, uh, to maintain the integrity of the town. So, Mayor, I'm, I'm not voting in favor tonight, although uh, Ralph's put up a heck of a fight, so thanks. Thank you, Council Member Cook. I still have a question for staff. I'll wait for my comments later. Um, as it relates to the northeast corner and the southeast corner properties, those owners of those properties, is there any activity with staff recently as to flipping those from commercial to residential? And then my second question is, as it relates to maybe a one mile or two mile radius from this particular intersection, are there been other property owners of commercial corners that have approached staff about flipping them from commercial to residential? Mayor Lewis and uh, Council Member Cook, this is the uh, intersection we're talking about immediately east is uh, 20 acres um, and north of that's another five acres as we've discussed tonight. Um, has there been any request to flip that back to residential? No. Uh, there hasn't been really any activity at all since approximately 2009 when there was some discussion. Uh, it did go through the design review board off to the east uh, known as uh, Higley Pavilion. Uh, looking further out, that's quite the big uh, jump there further out, but uh, we've had some um, basically increase in the density of residential. That's primarily what I've seen. Um, uh, people wanting to go from residential 0 to 1, 1 to 2, to the 2 to 2.5. I don't recall if there's any other particular sites that have gone, uh, requested to go from um, commercial to residential. I believe up at Leighton Lakes there's one. I don't know if I could consult with um, anybody else from our staff here. I, we don't really, we're not aware of any that have that request recently. Thank you. Councilmember Cook, no comments at this time? I'll wait. Councilmember Peterson, I'm looking for comments. Oh, I just had a quick question. Is there any um, plans, regional or otherwise, for a freeway to come in nearby this site at some point. Mayor Lewis, uh, Council Member Peterson, no, there's uh, no request in the near proximity. I don't know if I'm being corrected or not here. I don't believe that there is. Um, Riggs Road is, uh, is the primary road. It's a ro road of regional significance. We know that uh, from the Phoenix Mesa Gateway Airport, there's a, a pretty much of a major road which is heading down into Pinal County. I really don't think that there's any freeway leg at this point. Power Road is a major road. It'll in continue to increase in uh, usage in the future. Val Vista's a major road, Higley. These are major arterials, but no freeways that I'm aware of. Thank you. Would you, would you like to make any comments? I guess so, Mayor. Somebody has to, oh no, Chen was a good, or Council Member Daniels was a great leader on this. Um, uh, First of all, I don't think there's any rush. Um, there's, uh, first of all, the staff analysis, which I don't know if I really call that an analysis. That's just some ratios and figures, and, and that's good, but that was the first time I got to see that. So for one thing, I, I would like some more time to, to think about that. So I just want to say there's no rush. Uh, if we, w we need to continue the item, I think that that's totally uh, acceptable. And the other thing I would just point out, um, is that we all agree, we all agree that we want as much 
retail in Gilbert. Well, at least I know I want to see that as much as possible. For the main reason, and I've actually gotten uh, chided or teased for my comment about this, but I do think that a sales tax, a, co a consumption tax, is the, base, the best kind of tax. And so I, I do not want to see us having to, well, I'm not a big spender, so that's one reason it's really important we keep our spending in line. But I don't want to see any demand for other kinds of taxes, and so I feel that that pressure uh, very strongly. So we all agree we want as much of that as possible. The question is, what is possible? And so we've got a lot of opinions about that tonight. We've got a lot of different people offering thoughts. Um, you know, uh, if, if I go with the experts, though, and I have to decide who knows more about private market and what works, the private market or government? Do we, from a central body, centrally planning, or do consumers, through their spending habits, tell us what works best? Well, I, I think if I go with that analysis, I think that the private market knows better what, what works. And so I would say to the thought that, you know, the community's gotten behind this idea, well, if they have, then I think they would show it with their spending. And, and apparently the market study doesn't show that they would. So nothing, you know, nothing speaks more clearly than how we spend. And so um, in my mind, if we have to vote tonight, I, I do think there's some good questions that have been raised. I'd like to learn more about them. If we have to, to vote tonight, I, I, I'm definitely in favor of, uh, you know, I think 15, 10 acres of commercial we want to hold up. Uh, hold on to as much as possible. Vestars said that they think 10 acres could work. Um, I could be okay with that. I will make one other comment because we are, one thing we, that big map was really great by the way, but what it, if you looked at the trends what you see is all the regional commercial centers are along freeways. Every single one with one exception, there was one exception, but that one exception wasn't bounded by a reservation so that you couldn't get your 360 degree radius on your drive times from nearby consumers. And so that's just a reality that we're dealing with in this site. Um, I, I, I think just between that and the e-commerce trends, things change. And, and that's, you know, that's why the markets know more than we do from a central body. They respond to consumer spending habits much more quickly than we can ever keep up with here. So, forced to, to vote tonight, I would be in favor of a change, but retaining as much commercial as viable, which I think is probably the 10 acres. Um, otherwise, I would be okay with continuance and learning more. Councilman Murray. Appreciate those who have come tonight and speak about this residence and appreciate Mr. Pugh and Vestar and their time explaining this to me and going out of their way to share their um, concerns and their thoughts and it's been very helpful. Uh, and, and I I agree with Councilmember Peterson in the fact that I do think that Vestar probably does know better um, that, than most of us as to whether a Walmart or a Home Depot or a Kohl's or some of the other big box retailers are interested in that site or not. Um, and so I, I don't second guess them on that. They've done a great job in the community and I suspect will continue to do so for a long time. My big concern in my question earlier was about the Santan character area. Um, there have been some minor changes over the last year that the council's made. There have been um, quite a few residents who were, uh, expressed their concern with some of those uh, changes that we made. And as a council, when we asked to have a stakeholder group to talk about that and to revisit that plan, uh, I, I think that that needs to be done. Um, and, and I'm afraid to make another big change um, in that area when we've been telling residents down there for some time now that we would address these very concerns. Um, with that being said, I would prefer that this waits until after that stakeholder group happens um, and that the residents, the town staff, that people like Vestar and other uh, interested parties uh, have a chance to revisit that plan and make the appropriate changes 
Uh, and again, the main reason behind this, we've been talking about doing that for some time, and we've told residents we would do that. And so I, I don't want to, um, I, I wouldn't support this now until we have fulfilled that um, promise that we gave the residents. And Al, just to clarify on that, as you had on one slide, if this is not approved tonight, it would be a year before it could be discussed again? Mayor Lewis, council members, if it's, if it's continued tonight, we could, um, you would follow up. Well, let's say we voted and it was not approved, would it be a year? If it's a major general plan amendment, it would be a year. Okay, yeah. and so th that, I mean, that could be valid if it was continued, that might be until six, seven months, but if, if not, then it could still come back in a year. Is and what my, I, my preference, if anyone on the council agrees, would be, if it is not gonna pass tonight, rather than vote and have it fail, I would prefer to continue it so that the applicant isn't forced to wait an entire year if that's what the Santan plan comes back with. Okay, Vice Mayor Cooper. Thank you, Mayor. Um, it's not hard to count, but I do want to make some comments. Um, my experience, my day job in the past has been to work on these kinds of projects, okay? I've done a couple of them. And my experience before that was to work uh, at GPEC. And so I understand what it takes to attract commercial and employment and those kinds of uh, uses to an area. And so my comments here, whether it's tonight that we discuss it or some stakeholder group or whatever, I hope that they are become part of the discussion in any case. I, as I look at the map of the Gilbert and I look at all of the red that's on there, that's both planned and in, in development, I have questions. Uh, there are corners in town where it just doesn't make sense to have as much commercial as we have planned. There are parts of, the, of certain character areas where the developments have been proposed in the past with the best of intentions seem to make sense. But where I'm at now is I'm much more interested in quanti or quality development than I am in, qu in a quantity of development, okay? It, it makes no sense for the community to hold on to red, or regional commercial parcels, or other com commercial categories that can't be developed, or if they are developed, and they all are developed, they become underperforming empty or half empty centers that lead to property value de declination or declining, I don't even know if that's a word, uh, but it is now. That's not the kind of development I wanna see in Gilbert. I wanna see quality development and it needs to be concentrated in areas where it makes sense. And that really relates to market realities versus our dreams and our hopes of what could maybe fit on this category in, in regional commercial. I looked at that list and I thought, boy, that's a huge farmer's market. Uh, there, I, I look at those uses and, and even employment and other uses, this, this site just doesn't cut it uh, in many of those areas in today's economy and for the foreseeable future. You know, you can't drive around right now without seeing UPS trucks, FedEx trucks, they're all over the roads and someday Amazon's gonna helicopter in packages for you. The world's changing, droning them in. They're gonna just land on your roof and you better watch out because that blender's coming and it's coming hard. So the world's changing and we, you know, you have to, you have to start looking at that. Just look at your own shopping patterns, examine them, this Christmas season, and I bet they're changing. I bet they're a lot different than they were five years ago. As it relates to the Santan character area, we have residents that normally are in here arguing against development and arguing against density, and they want their rural lifestyle to be untouched, yet at the same time, now they want big city retail and development that doesn't even work along, re, you know, transportation corridors that are well-developed, 
uh, let alone with the densities that are available and, and present in that part of our town as well as Queen Creek, which neighbors with even lower density in many cases. And so you can't have it both ways. Vestar, of course, or any developer that's eyeing these parcels, and yeah, there are, there are parcels that are being eyed right now in the, in the commercial area or arena. They are well aware of the growth that's coming here. We don't need a lesson on you know, how many people are coming here. The big boxes are well aware of Gilbert. We're on the map for these guys. And as a small business guy that owns a couple of businesses that rent you know, a couple thousand square feet each, and are very dependent on the, the big guys to bring traffic into the centers where I'm at, uh, I've got to say, if they're not coming, I'm not coming, okay? And they're not coming to a lot of these sites. And so that's the kind of feedback that we can have a stakeholder group, and I'm not really that, in, I'm interested in a stakeholder group overall looking at the Santan character area because I'm not real pleased with what's there in, 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 in certain areas. I think we can talk a little bit more about that. But I don't think a stakeholder group that gets together and talks about what they wish they could have is going to be very productive. It might be beneficial, it might be a, a, an experience we all enjoy and appreciate, but it's not going to change the market. And so we can have a stakeholder committee, and we should to talk about just the general generalities of the plan in the, in the area. But what's more interesting to me, and we got a little bit of it in the packet tonight, which we didn't really talk about, but what's more interesting to me would be a, a real study, again, not funded by the developer in this case, but a third party analysis of the retail potential for the Santan character area. Because I think these realities, when studied under the microscope of somebody that's independent, but yet understands demographics and all of that, uh, will be very informative to any stakeholder group now or in the future, or any council now or in the future. And so if it's not going to go forward tonight, I would hope and recommend, highly recommend, that it's more than just a stakeholder group, that we actually have a study done, and that that study not be a 10-year government study, but we hire somebody who knows what they're doing, and they get it done in three months, and we get the information, and we move on. Council Member, Council Member Taylor. Thank you, Mayor. I, I appreciate uh, Vice Mayor Cooper's comments. I'm not gonna repeat, but I share a lot of, a lot of those comments. I, I use some of the Reagan rule, trust and verify. So I spent most of my time talking to people that probably opposed the change, because um, I really wanted to dig into that, but also wanted to verify um, you know, some of the data and, and arguments on the, on the Vestar side. And you know, there's a project in Queen Creek that's very similar to this, and they really tried. I mean, we've got to hand it to them to put millions and millions of dollars and this kind of time into this to make this happen because I think we all all wanted that uh, so I, I, th I think I, I'd be happy to support a continuance as, as we've heard to take more time I think one of the things that um, I, and I again I don't know how how viable it is for them to look at other places to sell um, you know in that time maybe maybe they have maybe they have and I don't know how hard that effort has um, to continue to put something out there. But at the end of the day, the way I'm processing this is when we're dealing with regulating people's ability to you know, sell their property, do with what their, their property, this is their property. This is things that they invested in. Property rights for me are critical. I mean, it's a sacred thing. And we, at the same time, we have a responsibility to have a responsible and a well-planned town as well. But there, there's, a, there's a high bar that someone has to clear for me to tell them they can't sell their property, they can't change or do, or do something that they want with it. And for me, when I ask questions and spent you know, hours on the phone, I just haven't seen that we've cleared that bar for me right now. Maybe that'll happen if we continue this and um, wouldn't, wouldn't oppose that if that's the direction of the council to take a little bit of time. But um, for me, if I was to vote um, tonight, then I would, I, I think there's wisdom in what came out of the Planning Commission um, to carve out a little piece there, 10, 15, I'm not, 
the expert on what's the right area there. I'd take the, the recommendation from the Vestar folks on what's right there, but that's, that's where I'm leaning on, on this topic, Mayor. Council Member Cook. I had a great conversation with, uh, with Ralph and uh, it was just, you know, very informative. You know, I, I posed a couple of questions um, with him um, that would, you know, obviously would help in my decision as to understanding, you know, the viability of, you know, some of these um, uh, projects that do happen. But I just want to share a vision that um, could potentially happen only because it's only something that, you know, is very familiar with me and my employment. Um, you know, I work literally off the 101 near Indian Bend and Viva Ventura over in Scottsdale. And prior to the, um, the 101 running north, the only road that really ran north was Pima, which reminds me a lot of uh, Hunt Highway. And the thing that really was impressive to me is that when the 101 northbound cut through the Salt River Indian Reservation, the development of other commercial properties and other businesses and so forth began to blossom. So I think that potentially a vision could be for our good friends at the Gila River down the road, they could potentially model after the Salt River uh, tribe, is that somewhere you know, 10, 20 years from now, maybe as growth moves to the south in Gilbert, that we do have the opportunity for some of these other properties for that future that I don't know about. Um, that potentially there could be a outer loop that cuts around Gilbert into Queen Creek that could provide another way for residents to get through you know, the Phoenix metropolitan area. So I'm open into being more conservative of something that I don't know about. But again, it's just a potential future. The, you know, the uh, Gila River folks might one day say, you know what, We're, you know, that might happen. So I'm, I'm more open to waiting um, and not moving forward um, with this particular proposal. Okay. My, my feelings would be this, that the appreciated the comments about the private market from Councilmember Peterson, which I, that's part of my fabric, and, and I look through the eyes of business in making decisions, and Vice Mayor Cooper's comment about quantity and quality, um, quantity, <laughs> quality, but, and I, I kind of smile at that because I know that quality is the end result that we all want, but it was 2012, some numbers that I looked at today that showed uh, the comparison of Gilbert, Mesa, Tempe, and Chandler, and what percent we had in residential uh, versus the other communities and what was designated for commercial and retail and such. And uh, Gilbert was by far the highest in residential. And that led us into our retreat of 2012 where we continued to use the phrase of we want to be not just a bedroom community but bedroom business community. And so the timing of this discussion is such that um, I... If we were built out, it would be different because I would be more inclined, but we have residential land that has been planned for, and those, in, in a way, uh, while I appreciate that, that comment from Councilmember Taylor, there are landowners that have been designated to build residential, let them go first from a property owner perspective. And that doesn't mean I want to penalize Vestar. They are a great business partner, but at the same time, timing. And so I'm, I'm ready to wait. And so I'll just, uh, my tabulation of this would be three no's, two that would be in favor of what the planning commission was close to, and two that would like to wait. So if we close the public hearing, I don't know where that's going to take us until we'd have some motions that would give us some votes. But, but before I do close the public hearing, we've heard from each other. Is there any other dialogue? Mayor Lewis, just confirming that if we do continue, it has to be to a date certain. Correct, okay. Uh, Mayor, Councilwoman Daniels, that's correct. I have to provide a notice of public hearing to a date certain. And if we did a date, and we weren't ready at that future date, then we would just need to continue it. But 
understand. So on a vote, if we move to continue, we would need a specific, spe specific date. Okay. Anything else before I close? I close the public hearing on agenda item number 13, and I will entertain a motion. Mayor, I move that we continue this item until, um, I think I want to say the last meeting in March. I don't have my calendar out in front of me. I'm sure you can get me that date. Um, with the direction that we commission an independent study, looking at the calendar here, yeah, uh, the 27th, March uh, 27th, with the, uh, with the direction that we commission an independent study on the overall need for retail dollars in the Santan care, or overall uh, potential for retail dollars in the Santan character area. And that we, you know, once that study comes back, hopefully in that time frame, that we have this discussion again. Second. Okay. Quick question for staff, March 27th. Feasible or not? Any? Mayor Lewis Council, a lot of that's going to depend on how fast we can get uh, the independent study under contract and working forward. Okay. Mayor, maybe I'm going to, because I, I feel like I could go out and get that study right now, but at the same time, um, I, we don't have any figures on what it might cost and that kind of thing. That may come into play, so I would like to amend my motion there um, that we provide direction to staff to go find that information out, time frame as well as cost, and bring that back to us uh, as soon as possible, which would be, you know, by the end of January. And that we, you know, I don't know how this motion is ending up at this point. That's, that's the general theme of where I want to go. <laughs> Anyone want to help me with that? May, may I ask a question? <laughs> <laughs> Council Member Cook. Well, I guess the question is, the, you know, if we move forward with the um, stakeholder committee, and we've already went through planning and zoning on this, I guess I'm a little confused as it relates to, I mean, there's no doubt I've been waiting for this committee or stakeholder committee when we had our retreat this last year, because we talked about getting this thing going early. And for some reason, maybe we're just so lean and mean and there's other high priorities that we didn't get to it. But I guess I'm kind of lost as to, you know, we go through this, is that going to change really what is on the plate today? Is that something that they're going to talk about as it relates to how much you know, commercial versus how much res residential, I, I don't know. So I guess I'm looking for some thoughts as to if we're going to give direction for this subcommittee to move forward with, you know, what are the directions are we going to do? So I, I, th I don't know if this is premature. Or, well, I understand the concept, but. And I understand my motion wasn't very clear, Mayor, if I may. Uh, I was not indicating that the stakeholder group uh, would need to come to any resolution before we had this case. I was really, my motion was more narrow and focused on an independent study uh, by experts, not just those of us who have hopes and dreams for something. I mean, I, that's an important process we can have and we should have, but I think they need this data just as much as we need this data. And so that's my hope when I move to continue this I'm going to put it out there a couple few months, um, but the hope is that while that while we're having it continued to that point, that the staff is moving forward on getting us some answers on what that study might look like, how long it would take, and then if you know if it, if the time frames are off, then when the case comes back before us, we can talk about uh, kicking the can down the road more if we have to. Thank you. I had two hands. I saw. Can I second him? <laughs> Mayor, we have a motion, uh, motion and a second on the floor. We can just vote on it. Okay. And then right. We can, can I, keep talking about it, but. Can I just clarify the motion? <laughs> or is the motion to move to continue this until the end of March with the direction to staff to look into a, um, what'd you call it? Uh, independent third party study. 
and then they'll get back, the staff will come back to us with what the ramifications of that would be, cost, timing, et cetera. Is that the motion? Before, yeah, that that happens sooner rather than later. Not that, that that's not tied to this other date. Is the second okay with that, Mayor? Second. Okay. okay. All right, so with that motion and second, please vote. Okay, that is approved with a 4-3 vote. Okay, done. I open the public hearing on agenda item 12. And... Councilmember Cook, I think you had some questions and did you desire a presentation or just a few questions? Um, I was not here physically for the study session and obviously it was hard for me to listen. But I do have questions with for staff. Because I do want to get some clarification. When I look at some of the um, tables that are in the packet and they show the proposed fees and then they show the current fees. What really stuck out to me as being kind of like, you know, got my attention was the amount of percent change of increase on some of those fees. And I guess my question uh, that wasn't really in the communication is some of the uh, the details of the analysis, is that information available for me to review? I know this is something that we're not voting on, we're, you're just presenting this, but is there something that I can get from staff so I can review um, why the increases are so high and so forth? Mayor Lewis, uh, Councilmember Cook, Nicole Lance, with assistant to the town manager with the town manager's office. Um, Councilmember Cook, absolutely, uh, when we get a little bit further down the road, the portion of the process that we're in right now um, is solely focused on the land use assumptions and the IIP. So this was uh, something that we had talked about during the uh, previous um, study session presentation that the, the portion of the process we're in right now, you'll see up on December 19th, any changes to the land use assumptions or the IIP that are in this document are gonna drive differences in those figures which could potentially change the percentage amount. So um, to deliver a lot of detail on that right now might be a little bit premature. Uh, we currently have a meeting scheduled. Uh, Jackson Mull from the Home Builders Association and I have um, already spoken. We're meeting on Monday to get some commentary from them. Um, that might drive some of the changes in the figures. So absolutely we can get some detail um, once we have those nailed down a little bit more so that it's a, a high value discussion. I did also want to um, notify the council if there are any questions. We do have Dwayne Guthrie here from Tischler Bice. Uh, if there are anything uh, that you'd like to ask directly of him. Thank you. Any Councilmember Peterson? Just a, a brief comment. I've spent quite a bit of time studying it, probably still not enough, but uh, I do have some concerns as well, and, and so, but I'll take that offline. It's into the weeds. I know no one has patience for that. It's not necessary for the meeting, but just wanted to make my my concerns, put it out there so it's not some surprise if we have some later. Thanks, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Taylor. It, question on the stakeholder. In addition to Jackson, um, any other stakeholders that you plan on getting feedback from? Councilmember Peterson. <laughs> Um, no, I, I haven't. I haven't been contacted by any other stakeholders yet. Um, but this is the 30-day uh, comment period uh, coming into that meeting in January. Um, so we are definitely open. If there are any other stakeholders that would like to meet, we're more than happy to do so. And uh, Councilmember Peterson, I said that jokingly, but I will be reaching out to you to set a meeting. And Nicole, on what we're voting on, as we see that schedule tonight is just voting on the process to continue, is that a summary? Tonight, uh, there's no uh, no motion for this evening. It's simply a public hearing. It's one opportunity, um, another opportunity within okay. the process for public comment. That was an intentional piece of the legislation to make sure that there were ample opportunities for public involvement. So this is one of those in addition to the others that are listed in, in addition to uh, staff availability. Thank you. So for agenda item 12, 
I close the public hearing and I open the public hearing on agenda item 15. Council Member, Member Peterson. I just want this said before we adopt these changes. I want it confirmed. These changes will not add any new taxes <laughs> in any way to our wonderful citizens. The, uh, Mayor Lewis, <laughs> Council Member Peterson, it, it, this journals and tax compliance. Uh, it will not. It, it, what I've done is, um, what we're doing here is we're, we're adopting all of the changes for, or a lot of the changes that, that are occurring or in the process. Everything has been accomplished so far in simplifying uh, local tax, making it more in compliance with the, with the state tax. Um, there were a couple of items um, we had, uh, we've re separated out the food for home consumption, left that exactly the same as it is, just, it's just a little different, just has a different code reference. Um, there was an, uh, an addition for uh, a um, wastewater removal tax, set that rate at zero, stays the same as we are right now. Everything basically stays the same. Thank you. Reductions in tax. I appreciate that, just wanna make sure we got that clear. Thank you. Any other discussion on 15? <laughs> I close the public hearing on agenda item 15 and we'll entertain a motion. I motion that we approve agenda item 15. Is there a second? Second. Okay, with that motion, second, please vote. That's approved with a seven of vote, thank you. On the administrative items, 16 has taken place. Let's go to 17 reports on boards, commissions, and committees. Okay. We appreciate all those who have served in the year 2013. We'll carry on. Agenda item 18, I believe we covered in the consent calendar. Agenda item 19, we did get word of the activity, the repairing after dark tomorrow night, 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. Invite all citizens to that. It's a free event for all ages. And parking is available at the Southeast Regional Library. Walking holiday lights and lumin luminary tour. Thanks to our Parks and Recreation Department. Agenda item 20. Report from town manager on current events. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. Uh, first, I wanted to announce in January on the 31st, we will have our second annual Spark Apley comp uh, competition in partnership with ASU Poly's College of Technology and Innovation, as well as Intel. We, I'm proud to announce we have 32, 32 teams already signed up from 10 cities all across the Phoenix region, 224 people, so that's our maximum capacity for the event. We're focusing as well on a special category for all female teams uh, for this competition, and we have, uh, we're verifying the number, but at least two all female teams signed up as of this point. So we're looking forward to that uh, and the competition and the involvement of youths from all around the region in that. And then lastly, I'd just like to end the year by thanking all of our employees for the great work in 2013. Uh, they did a fantastic job, and I look forward to 2014. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Agenda item 22, report from council members on current events. Council Member Daniels. I'd like to congratulate our attorney, Mike Hamblin, for having the most festive holiday outfit on today. <laughs> We've been admiring the best for most of the evening, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Agenda item 22, uh, the chamber had a, a gathering this morning with many of our seniors. I had a chance to attend that for a few minutes and so thanks to them. And so the holiday spirit is alive and looking great as was just mentioned from our town attorney and others. And so on that note, the two words we leave with, no, well, we can say that it's, Shop Gilbert. Meeting adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>